Hi everyone, this is Françoise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you a useful watercolor technique I used to paint this beautiful watercolor sky. This was a 15 minutes watercolor project and here you're going to see all the steps I used to paint it. So if you want to follow along while you learn about the technique I want to talk about today, it's completely doable. I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed right now to show you all the paintings I did lately and in all of them I am using this useful watercolor technique that involves the right choice of colors and layering those colors to get a beautiful painting you love. I'm going to dive deeper into this to explain why this matters and most importantly how you can achieve this for yourself, but first I'll go through the supplies you need to paint this watercolor sky if you want to follow along. I'm using a 5x7 sheet of watercolor paper by Arches, cold pressed and 100% cotton. I recommend you to try 100% cotton watercolor paper for this type of project since cotton paper deals with water a lot better than wood pulp paper, which is the basic and less expensive watercolor paper you'll find. And since we're painting a sky, we're going to use a lot of wet and wet and 100% cotton paper will help us achieve that beautiful sky easily. I'm using some masking tape to keep the paper firmly in place and get some crisp edges. Today I'm also using the Confetti Beginner Set by Art Philosophy. It has some cool colors for pastel and dreamy watercolor skies so I like to use it for those. A paper towel will come in handy for the technique we're going to explore today and then you'll need a few paint brushes. These are all the ones I tend to use for skies, but I don't use them all in the one same painting. I'll just go with what feels best at the time, so don't worry if you don't have a lot of paint brushes to choose from. What I can tell you works for me is a natural hair fiber brush like these here, because it is great for the wet and wet technique, or even to lift color, since it retains water a lot better than synthetic brushes. Synthetic brushes like these, however, I really like to use since they come to a very fine tip and they help me paint details and trace thin strokes when I need to. All of the supplies I just mentioned are linked in the description if you need them. Now let's dive in the technique that I used to paint my beautiful watercolor sky. Like I said, we want to play with colors and layer them in a way that will achieve more contrast, depth, harmony and vibrancy for your painting. That's what this technique is all about. I'm mixing my colors ahead of time to have them ready when my paper is wet and that I need them. I want to use yellow, orange, some blue and purple in this painting. But my main colors, the ones overpowering this piece, are going to be orange, purple and blue. So notice how I add a little bit of orange to my yellow tone. I do this because I want to make sure a little bit of the main color I am using in my painting ends up in the other colors that make up this painting. Adding orange to my yellow will give it more of an orange look, which is what I want, but there will be undertones of yellow in there, and that will add a bit of interest. And if I want to use plain orange elsewhere, there will still be a nice connection to that yellow-orange tone in the overall painting, and none of the colors will look like they don't belong. In the same way, I'm mixing red and orange to get some red undertones in my orange mix. Again, if I choose to use a little bit of red and red alone here and there in the painting, it won't feel like it's out of place because of those undertones in my red-orange mix. Of course, you can very well use one yellow, one orange, and one red color separately, but the more I paint, the more I appreciate the power of color mixing and how that can help tie all the colors in the painting. So this is not something you have to do or anything, but it's a good way to spice up your painting process a bit and paint harmonious pieces. With my darker color, purple, I chose to add a little bit of black to get an even darker tone of purple. Mixing colors in your palette in that way is one aspect of the technique I'm showing you today because next I'm going to show you how to use those colors on paper. For this type of sky, I'm going for a wet and wet wash, which means I'm wetting the paper first and then I apply the colors I just prepared. I used a reference photo to paint this, and in the reference, I noticed a lot of the blue in the sky was mostly just blue, and it was also covering a good part of the painting. So even though in watercolor it's good practice to start with light colors such as yellow, I'm choosing to apply blue first to get the bigger part of the sky out of the way, and then I'll work on the other colors. Even though this is just blue, even though I did not mix any other color to it, I can add a little something to the painting by using different values of blue. For instance, I started applying a light version of this blue because there was a lot of water in the mix. 
But now I'm coming back with the same mix, only there's more paint in it, and because of that my blue now is a bit darker. I'm applying this in several spots, but I'm not covering all of the lighter blue areas, because I want to make sure I have several values of blue showing. Doing this is a good way to increase contrast and depth in the painting, even when you use only one color. When you have more colors like we do, you can also act on contrast even more and create a sense of harmony in your painting by mixing them up a bit to each other, like I showed you previously. Now to include my yellow orange and orange red to my painting, first I need to make sure my brush is clean to keep those colors intact and as pure as possible as I'm adding them. Here I'm careful not to mix them with blue too much, I just want them to touch and blend into each other because they're opposite on the color wheel and tend to make muddy tones together. This is why I'm starting from the bottom, painting upwards until they meet my blue color. I add some up there in the top right corner and I use my brush to create movement to make it look like those clouds I'm painting now are moving from above and towards the center. Some of it is mingling to my blue color, and you can see it loses a little bit of vibrancy, but it's okay because here my main focus is to break off the large chunk of blue sky with some of the colors, and that will add interest in the painting. Besides, I will increase vibrancy later and I'll show you how. I rinse my brush and I move on to purple. I add it in that top right corner in the same way I did with orange. Again, I'm not covering up all of my orange tone. I want some of it to show to get a nice variety with my colors. I add purple and some other parts, which is going to help with the harmony I want to create here, to have a little bit of each color spread out randomly all over the painting. Here you have to be careful not to go overboard, and just add small touches of paint over the initial wash of blue. My paper still is pretty wet, so the purple is spreading a little too much to my taste. To fix that, I pick up a clean and damp brush and fade the edges of it to soften them. At this point, we have a good harmony in our painting, but it's a little dull. My paper is drying, but it's still a bit wet, which is perfect with this next step of adding vibrancy. To add vibrancy, I need to add some of those light and bright colors I have, yellow, yellow-orange, red-orange, and if you like, red. To use these effectively in this step, I need to make sure there's more paint and less water in my brush when I apply them. Not only will that add vibrancy and help contrast and depth, but since the paper is drying, we don't want to have a bunch of water in our brush, otherwise we might ruin the sky with a big bloom. Don't worry if that happens to you if you're a beginner, it's totally normal and it gets better with practice and patience. I'm adding more orange-red here and there now. It spreads a bit more than I would have wanted, but that's okay. We still need to improve contrast. I see that most of the colors towards the bottom half are really light. This is why I'm adding a few strokes of purple, then orange. Again, I make sure to clean up my brush in between, and I also use a little water to make sure these strokes stand out more and to avoid blooms. A good way to maximize contrast here, since everything is still a bit wet, is to lift some color in a few spots. To do that, all you need is to rinse your brush again, dry it so it stays just damp, then soak up color from a sheet where you want a highlight. This will lead to whiter areas even though they will never be paper white again since we already painted them. There is no rule for how much you work on contrast, it's up to your own appreciation of how much contrast you need. For me, I feel like I should be adding more dark purple tones and then lift paint some more and so on. I'm happy with what I'm getting now, so I'm gonna stop here. You can see how working on mixing our colors and applying them with more or less water, overlapping them, and lifting some really helps with the overall look of a painting. If you're following along this sky painting, let me show you how to paint the mountains. Same principle here. I'm mixing a bit of purple to my black color. Purple because it won't affect my black too much if I add just a little, but it will help tie everything together in the painting since I already used purple in the sky. Besides, black is set to look flat when used alone. To make sure those mountains pop, you will need a thick mix of that paint. It's also better to use a brush with a fine tip if you have one to make them look like mine, but it's not a must. We're done with this painting. Let me know if you enjoyed learning about the technique I used to make my paintings look harmonious and to make everything pop and look more real with good contrast. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and comment. And for more videos like this one, 
subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss what I have in store next. Thanks for watching and see you next time.